Welcome, and it's so nice to have all of you here this evening. Uh, tonight is the annual potluck meeting and dinner of the Wellfleet Community Forum. I am Sheila Lyons, and I am the president of this forum. And I'd like to introduce my board. Uh, some of our members are here, but I'll remember all of them, I hope. We have Dick Elkin and Esther Elkin. We have Dick Guernsey, John Morrissey, Tom Cole, myself, Kurt Felix, Justina Carlson, um, May Ruth Seidel is a member of our board, former member of the non-resident taxpayer, so she's a great asset. And I don't think I need this. And um, Harry Turkanian has been. Uh, I'm sorry. Pardon me. Oh my God. My, our secretary, who I don't know what I'd do without, David Wright, and. Um, uh, Harry Turkanian have all been part of our uh, group this year. And I would like to say that the Wellfleet Community Forum was founded back in the 1990s when it was a very contentious issue. I don't know which one it was, but the community <laughs> uh, amazingly wasn't getting along and uh, had big disagreements and it got somewhat vitriolic. So uh, people thought that we should have a forum so that we could come together in a civilized way and have our disagreements, but still respect each other and work out those disagreements. And I think that in today's climate, we're all searching for that. So this is a great um, organization and entity that the town has blessed to help us do that. So um, this year, we really did try to bring up issues that would be um, on our ballot and uh, affecting our town so that people had a chance to learn the facts. Why is this being proposed? What has been really, what's the background story? And then decide, do you like it? Make your comments beforehand and actually have them considered. So we started out with an overview of the Cape Cod Commission and their role in helping regional planning and their assistance to give to towns. All of this is online on our website, so I do encourage you to take a look at some of these, particularly the Cape Cod Commission. It was very educational, very informative. You got a very good idea of what it does and how valuable that um, it's our regional planning uh, agency, but it also has a regulatory authority over our environment and on building and uh, siting, and they really have made a great difference on many other issues, uh, wastewater management and many other things. So they're a great entity. Our others was an update on the library and the health care, our Outer Cape Health Care, which is developing and building a new site here this fall. Uh, then we had the state of the town, so we went over the different warrants of the state of the town, and had an in-depth discussion about those, was able to have questions ahead of time. Wastewater management hires and beach parking of the, that was going to be on the town warrant. And then we had a candidates night for all our selectmen and local candidates that were running for office. We had a pre-town meeting that went over the warrant. And then we hosted the annual, and this is on our website, all of the annual town meetings that took place last year. And then we um, did a, a forum on the solar panels that are going to be um, going up in the landfill. And that will be a ballot question on the special town meeting on September 24th, I believe it is. So we will be having a uh, forum between now and the 20th on our special town meeting that's coming up this September so that you understand the three questions. One of them have to do with uh, marijuana uh, dispensaries. So it's kind of timely here. And then we had a public meeting on the transportation plan for the light here at Main Street uh, on our Route 6 and Main Street coming in where there's been quite a few fatal accidents and the Department of Transportation came down with their proposed plans and heard uh, from a very vocal town. They were very impressed with the amount of people that came out, and I'd like to think that we helped that happen. Uh, and then we helped um, support the non-resident taxpayers this year by promoting their their meetings, which were very informative as well. Uh, many many in keeping of the same uh, topics, and then some. And then we also hosted together a meeting with our new superintendent. So those are the types of things that we do at the forum. We do try to promote uh, civic engagement, understanding, and really help. It's going to take all of us to keep our community beautiful. It's a beautiful. We have a lot of climate um, uh, assaults coming upon us, 
We, there's a lot of things that we have to think about how we're going to adapt to the changes that are coming on us. And if the closer we become in able to talk to each other, the better we're going to be able to fare through these storms that are coming ahead. So with that, um, I encourage you all to become members. We are a uh, nonprofit. You can, you can donate whatever you wish. If you'd like to be on our uh, website, get on our mailing list. You can go to our website, which is wealthycommunityforum.org, and just you can even make a donation through that and sign up for our newsletter or whatever meetings we're having so that you are in the loop. So um, I want to thank my board members for their hard work and input and lots of really thoughtful discussions this year of how we were going to uh, really help our community along. And there's one other thing I want to say that we do, and it's kind of shameful that only like one or two people show up on this one morning a month. But we do uh, sponsor the Adopt the Highway. And in the summer months, uh, you know, a lot of people throw trash out. And it, and it is sort of a sign of where we are. The more trash you see, it's sort of like that broken windows thing. So I don't like to see that. But uh, it's out there. And there's different groups, and we are one of them, that get up at 7 o'clock in the morning with our little pick sticks and little orange jackets and they go around and they will go through up and down Route 6, parts of Route 6 to clean this trash. Um, it is the what Thursday, what Tuesday of the month, Dick? Third. It's the third Tuesday and how many more are left? September? Or? Until September, October. Oh, uh, September. So there's three more mornings that you have a chance to get out at 7 o'clock <laughs> with your neighbors and do a good community service and it is kind of fun. You walk together and you get to chat and you know it's actually kind of pretty so um, uh, and it's interesting the things you pick up <laughs> along the road and I'll just leave it at that so uh, just a little intrigue but I do want to thank those people that got up those mornings and Denny O'Connell is one of them who is not a member who's not he's a member but not here and um, I was able to get out there myself and Dick Guernsey um, a tip of my hat to you for for spearheading that and being out there all of the time every morning so um, with that, we're just going to do one piece of business. It is our nominating and election of officers, and then we will be going into our speakers tonight, who will I will probably introduce after we do this. So thank you all. Dick, you are on. This is Dick Elvin. Um, so this is the report of the nominating committee. Um, uh, Sheila Lyons is nominated for president. Jeff Ash, the vice president. David Wright, the secretary, Dick Guernsey for treasurer, and extending their terms for three more years for the board of directors, Dick Elkin, Kirk Felix, Harry Turkanian, and Jeff Pasch again. So if you, can I have a motion to accept the report? Is the Is there a So moved. Okay, second. second. Okay. Is there any discussion? Um, does anybody have anybody they would like to nominate to any of those positions? Or volunteer yourself to <laughs> <laughs> With all that said, um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Tonight's speakers, and there's some growers from Truro, some a grower here in Wellfleet. And so what we're being faced with now is that if marijuana is legal, you can have it as a business. There's dispensaries coming into Wellfleet, and uh, you know they're they're in the negotiating with the towns right now, and we'll hear more of that at town meeting. But um, when I was listening to these uh, gentlemen last last year at our town meeting. It was strange to me that they're going to be bringing all this product down to Wellfleet so that they can have their store in Wellfleet. I felt a little like Target. And, um, and I said, well, we have people who really know how to grow here. Uh, there is product here. Why can't we somehow make this, help this work for our own local economy and um, have that they as the distributors to our local, to our local dispensaries? Now that might sound, you know, not good to, to big business, but there is a lot of um, money involved in growing this because of security and uh, all of the regulations that the state has put around it. So we may want to consider, and I was talking about this earlier, um, supporting and helping cooperatives so that there is one place where people 
could, you know, uh, band together and do something to to um, to make this work, and maybe we could get some subsidies there. But that's just my thought. That has I just thought of that today. I am going to let these um, people come up and speak for themselves and tell us the joys, the uh, the ecstasy of uh, victory, and, <laughs> yeah, the down down proud of defeat. <laughs> so, what is Tim McCarthy from Truro? And Hello, we have everyone. Eddie McDonald from Wellfleet. And who else do we have? Her husband, husband Pat. And, and her baby Wiley. Her baby Wiley are here, and, but they're not going to be speaking. And Dre. And, and Stephanie. And Stephanie. Uh, also from Truro. So you're all going to introduce yourselves and what you do, and then have someone sort of kind of sign some of some things for us. That's okay. Oh, good advice, too. Good. All right. And, and so yeah, we let's uh, move all the way down, guys. Move all the way down. We should have little door door prizes or something going on, but the way it goes. Yeah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, I'm Annie McDonald, and I'm what I do is I get really nervous public oh speaking. And uh, did you use the mic? Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> Hello. Is it on? It's on. It's, it's on. Is that better? Yes. Okay. Uh, my name is Annie McDonald. Um, I've been living in Wellfleet for 16 years. Um, my profession has changed many times um, from child care to elder care. And for the last six or seven years, I've been farming um, on my small plot of land in South Wellfleet. Uh, I've been doing the Wellfleet Farmers Market. The first year it started here um, was really lovely, and I uh, was just a drop-in farmer. But ever since then, the second year, I've been doing it every week. Um, also, a big, big part of the um, Truro Agricultural Fair, which was last weekend, and um, now we have a new industry. So I'm trying to get into this new. Um, a new crop that's legal and has 102 pages of regulation from the state. So it's really, um, they're putting it in perspective for us, which is kind of awesome. We just have to follow their rules and hopefully I can get the support of the town to uh, work with me. This is Pat. <laughs> uh, my name is Pat. Um, I am Annie's partner and business partner. And this is our son, Wiley. Um, <laughs> and yeah, everything that Annie said, um, pretty much uh, we are farming together uh, and we are hoping to expand our farm a, li a little bit to include this new crop. Hi, I'm Dre Cook. Um, I'm from Pure Joy Farm in Truro uh, with John Hopkins and Debbie Hopkins. And uh, also we uh, sell at the Wellfleet Farmers Market, the Truro Farmers Market. We sold at Orleans Market. Town, and we're trying to keep the farm going as a like an actual sustainable farming business, and um, we uh, produce hummus at the farm as well now. And so we're trying to add a few different things to the farm so that it can stand on stand on its own. So this has been one of those one of those things, um, and it's very daunting and um, so having support from the community is really one of the, one of the most important things because um, when you're drowning in regulations, uh, <laughs> there's, it, it, having that support out there is just like that little cushion pillow comfort. Um, so uh, thanks for coming out and um, asking your questions or uh, Anything you're doing tonight. <laughs> Good evening. Um, I normally print, but my printer wouldn't print, so you're going to have to bear with me while I read this bit. Good evening. I'm Stephanie Ryan, and I'm a farmer who's lived in Truro for 30 years. As an organic farmer on the Outer Cape for over 20 years, I've watched as many of my peers have been priced out due to exorbitant land prices. Cape Cod has a rich history of small independent farms. In order to survive and pay my mortgage, I have a cleaning business, a property management business. I'm the farmer at the school in both Churro and Wellfleet. I coordinate the Churro Agricultural Fair. 
and I am the project manager and lead farmer overseeing a USDA grant that facilitates programs at seven elementary schools on the Outer Cape, reaching annually over 1,200 students. All of this is in addition to farming. My land providing not only open space and habitat for many threatened species, such as the monarch butterfly, but to produce flowers, honey, vegetables, and herbs for our community and visitors alike at local farmers markets, restaurants, and institutions. My interest in adding cannabis as a member of the High Dune Craft Cooperative, here in front of you, to my diverse crop list is rooted in my desire to maintain my family farm, despite the ever-increasing cost of living on the Outer Cape. It will help us modestly increase our income while creating year-round jobs. The Hydrogen Craft Cooperative's bylaws reflect our commitment to inclusion as well as safe organic growing practices. We will be striving to produce an environmentally conscious, high quality product. Our farmers respect our aquifer and the land we farm. For decades, we have been growing organic produce and those practices will carry over to this additional crop. Our co-op members have a long and diverse background of social activism. Through the CCC's leadership, that's the uh, Commonwealth Cannabis Commission, the overseeing okay. body. Through the CCC's leadership program, the members of the HDCC will continue to work on behalf of social and economic justice in this industry. We are, you heard it, <laughs> We are committed to achieving all four level leadership levels, which include social justice leader, local employment leader, energy and environmental leader, and compliance leader. In addition, the HDCC has developed a bylaw to donate a percentage of the co-op's annual income to organizations, research projects, or institutions with the express intent of funding continued research in the efficacy of medical medicinal benefits from cannabis. This is not a mandated requirement by the CCC, was, but, but was important for us as members to reflect our commitment to furthering the cause for medical cannabis. By supporting local, socially responsible cannabis businesses with a focus on community, you are supporting the Outer Cape's future and helping to maintain its rural integrity. Thank you. Um, my name is Arthur Bosworth. I am the other half of Stephanie at Out There Grown. Um, I move the soil around, um, and she's more of a scientific, uh, better half, as we like to say. Um, I saw this whole opportunity being um, a part of Hyden Craft Cooperative as a way of furthering our economic possibilities in the Outer Cape, which at times can be very limited or very seasonal, as, as my wife has sort of pointed out. Um, there are not many opportunities I'm going to have left where I can get in on the ground floor of a business that's legal and um, can hopefully support my family in the future and hopefully support existing families and young people coming to the Cape or want to stay who may have enough property where they can see it as a feasible business. Um, I think that, uh, that at least the cooperative model is, is a really interesting and um, special um, creation that Massachusetts has uh, developed unlike anywhere else in the nation. It's really based in, in taking the industry to small existing farms. And we haven't seen that in the rest of the country, and it's really kind of some of the pitfalls of the other states. And um, I have to applaud our state for, for recognizing us and, and how we could benefit from being part of this industry. Um, and also, I'd like to thank you for having us here tonight. And um, I wish we had this type of forum in Truro. Unfortunately, um, it hasn't happened this way for us so far, but we are positive that things will work out for us in Toronto. Um, thank you. Great, thank you. Hi, Tim McCarthy, Outer Cape Cannabis Connection. My business partner is Dave DeWitt, uh, Dave's Greens. I'm sure most of you have seen that. And tell me that's not a heck of a collection of stories of hardworking people on the Outer Cape. Right? Yeah, that's really it. That's really it. 
this is the face of small farmers in, uh, on the Outer Cape, for sure. And these are the poster farms for the Cannabis Control Commission's craft cooperative clause in the law. I know because I'm the person who started it. I'm the one who got it in that law with uh, Julian Sear, our state senator, and our state representative, Sarah Peek. It's these people we were talking about. I, like a lot of you, am, am getting older. I've been using cannabis as a medicine now for over 30 years. And in 2012, when this state legalized medical marijuana, it had a clause in there that if you don't live close enough to the dispensary, you can grow your own. And if you can't grow it, you can ask someone else to do it for you. Well, guess what? My lovely farm, uh, farming friends in Truro grew it for me. So six years later, when it becomes adult use, I'm saying to myself, what about the skills they've earned? What about the opportunity that they should be able to share in? How do we get them in? So I'm at a party with State Senator Julian Sear, and I tell him, look, these Truro farmers, and he's a Truro person himself, as you well know, how can we get them into the law? Well, of course, his family is uh, in the, the restaurant business. So we were talking about what's the most highly regulated food there is, and how does the state deal with that? Well, clearly, it's shellfish. We have right here in Wellfleet the best oysters on the planet. And who do they come from? Wellfleet harvesters, right? Come on. And the analogy of that co-op, those harvesters have to sell through a co-op. That's exactly what Julian came up with as an idea that we could use for the cannabis. And needless to say, when we broached uh, Representative Peake with that, she was right on board. And both of them worked in both the House and the Senate and got it into each bill. So when the governor signed it, it was there. And as Boss says, we're the first country, sorry, the first state in the country to recognize small business and allowing small uh, opportunity, uh, sorry, small businesses and small farmers to uh, collectivize, come together for one license fee. So tonight, we're not here really to talk about the money. We're really here to talk with you as we are the story. Because all we're asking for is people to recognize that we're, what we're up to is a lifestyle, not a profit margin. This is not about money. It's about us sustaining the community that we live in the way we've done so for the past 20, 30, 40 years. So, thank you. No, no, no. Uh, it, uh, as a cooperative, we can only sell to wholesale. Li licensed buyers. Dispensary. There are other institutions. You would have to have a license in order to purchase from us. So is there a location? There will be several there. locations, but there are not exact. There's been a couple places in Wellfleet that have um, gotten post-community agreements through the town already. So um, once they get they're licensed in the state. There are, um, and I'm not sure exactly where they are, but there's definitely at least two businesses that have gotten post community agreements for Three. retail. Three. 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 And three. There. And then Provincetown, I believe, has at Thank least you. two, maybe three there. Yes. <laughs> Do you have any kind of commitment from any of the uh, people that? may come in to these dispensaries to buy from you if they can get it less expensively I have, not organic? I have heard from several people that they would... Um, I don't plan on having a very large operation because I have two acres and I don't plan on turning the entire two acres into um, growing cannabis. I want my child to have a place to play and I still want to grow vegetables and flowers. <laughs> But what I want to have is, this, uh, is really, like Stephanie was saying, like a really craft product. So people that want something local and organic and part of our personal um, business plan says that we won't sell, um, we'll sell all within 25 miles. So we really want to keep our small product really local. And two, at least two, and I, I wasn't sure of a third one, but the two people that I know have host community agreements, um, one of them's lawyer and one of them, the person that got it for themselves said that they would love to have my product. I mean, that's just, until we have a license through the state, we can't really, you know, be signing contracts with any distributioners yet. Yes. Just briefly, can you tell me what, what you're encountering in Shura, like what's the issue? Just for you to ask. <laughs> 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 I'm trying to share 
understand what issues they're encountering in Truro. Mm -hmm. what, what, obstacles? what are the obstacles that yes. they might be encountering a, in Truro? A lot of the conversation that we've had has been in um, like town meeting style things, like uh, planning board meetings, town meeting, um, board of select, select board meetings. So there's not like a lot of space for um, conversation in those types of things. So conversation is really important. And mm -hmm. um, I, this, so this type of this type of experience right here that uh, you can have seems to be um, more of a conversation. Than what, what, than are they, what, are, what are they saying? That, well, ba basically, what um, seems to be not I wouldn't use the word holding us up, but what we're really need uh, needling down negotiating is the zoning bylaws, and that's about districts. You know, residential versus commercial versus. 6A, well you don't have 6A, but yeah, mixed use, um, overlay maps, structures, uh, coverage of the, like percentage coverage of the land, what uh, acreage you need, that type of stuff. So it's really zoning bylaws that are um, sort of what we're caught up in and trying to work those out so that we can bring them to town meetings, which, you know, and so we were trying to get them on a September town meeting, but now we're back to November, I believe. Uh, just to elaborate a bit on that, the um, the state law requires, sorry, um, does not allow any municipality to erect barriers to any common sense business person from entering into this industry, okay? So number one, yes, you need zoning bylaws, but those law bylaws cannot restrict a business from really operating. And of course, how does the town of Truro or how does the town of Wellfleet know what that is? Except to talk to the people who are the farmers. So while we're negotiating, what we're really doing is educating the town officials of Truro as to what it means to be a cannabis farmer in Truro so that we can craft a set of bylaws that function for the town and function for the farmers. So I really want to make that clear there. We're really trying to educate. And of course ourselves, we have to make some compromises so that our neighbors aren't affected. But the chief issue seems to be that there is a profit and loss perspective, that the farmers will profit and the homeowners will lose, that the second homeowners will profit, uh, sorry, property values will plunge or something like that. And as I've already said, that's the wrong way to look at it. The way to look at this issue, especially in Wellfleet, is really from a uh, standpoint of a way of living. That's what we're talking about as the the town warrant that we'll share with one of the article in November in Truro is house size. People are terrified of these McMansions. Well, what better way to prevent anything from being built, what, regardless of how big it is, is to keep the land open and let it be farmed. The same thing will be in Truro. We are preserving open space. You have the same sort of issues that we in Truro have, without a doubt. Except that, as we've said here, you guys, so something we've never had before, so we really can't appreciate it more. Thank you. One more question. Yes, Helena. Is there any risk of, of, sort of um, other elements coming in to kind of, if you like, you know, rather than it being local people like yourselves, that there could be interest from outside who might move in on this? Mm. Yeah. Um, I mean, that is, that is definitely a, was one of the concerns in Churro. But, now, all of us have existing farms where we already live, and uh, the median cost of a property in Truro is $600,000. The economic viability of somebody coming to Truro or to Wellfleet to buy land in order to do that, it's not really economically viable. So it's not like if you allow that in your town and pass your zoning, that people are gonna come running. You, Western Mass, the land is much less money your power is cheaper the towns are yeah the taxes they're they're you know putting it out there and trying to get farmers to come there it's not really economically viable to say oh i'm going to move to wellfleet and start a cannabis farm because uh, the cost of property here this is a big money business. <laughs> no. No, that's, see, and that's what we're, in Churro, there are people were saying, oh, you guys are gonna be making a million dollars. Now, I'm not gonna share my, my business plan with you, but I'm just talking about like augmenting a crop and adding a little bit of cash. No, this you're, isn't. No, you're missing the point. Yes. The point is, if people are already doing this professionally, and they are doing it in other places, then 
suddenly um, Massachusetts becomes a place in which it's legal. Correct. And, and there's an area in which they might be interested in coming and then developing. That's that's the nature of Exactly, but when you can go to Springfield, so, Worcester. So if you're already making a lot of money, then, then why wouldn't you come and say, here's an area which is a holiday area where people might want to come because they want to get completely, you know, and spend <laughs> the tour might be. That's right. You're talking are, about retail. Yeah, we're, we're talking about retail. We're, we're talking growth. about cultivation. And those people yes, already have growth. the host community agreements. The retail already has been allowed. Three Your town has already town. allowed that. At least right. three. We're looking for a cultivation license. So I'm yeah. not asking to do this in the public eye. I'm just going to be able to bring a product that I'm producing on my own land behind a large fence with surveillance out of out of view of the road. No one will even see it. And to be able to supply the, the places that you're talking about are already, they are already definitely going to exist. And they're going to exist all over the whole state. But the thing is that that's been a, a the concern that I've heard most from people is that they're more afraid of the retail shops. Well, the, people are somehow already got their agreements in the town to get the retail shops. It's just the, the cultivator is what, what we're asking for. And we're asking for one license through the state that we're all going to be part of. And we have our own you know, agreements to be all organic because we all, we all have the same values as farmers already. Um, yeah, and it, what you're saying makes sense. It really does. But those retail facilities are already going to exist. And they're going to exist all over the state, so it won't necessarily be here. But um, but un unfortunately, we, we're not part of that. We're, not, we're never going to be able to take our product and give it to the people. People, you know, we're going to be bringing it to the whatever facility was licensed through the state to be able to distribute. But I do agree with you. I mean, I feel like the market is probably there for the retail, and this is a, a tourist destination. And I think that's what Provincetown's plan is and why they're offering those licenses, because they think it's going to be a destination. But that really has nothing to um, do with our discussion. But I, that's a very reasonable concern. But I believe your town's already signed those agreements. Well, it's not necessarily a concern. It's that, it's that you're talking about the culture. You're talking about the culture you want to create. Is it is it which know, culture is that? To Amsterdam, I live in London, and, and people go to Amsterdam as a as a as a as a, as a venue to go to, um, because Agreed. Um, you know it, it, you can sit happily in a cafe and smoke dope, um, and you can't do that in London. Although plenty of people do, but you know, you can't do that. Yeah. So, 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 so so you know I mean you can't even get medically in Britain at the moment. So so there's plenty of people who will come. Very specifically for that, you know, they'll come for you know stag dues and all kinds of things. You get just get wasted. So 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 and, and, you know, obviously the product has to be created somewhere and you will farm it. Um, but I just I can I can understand people wanting to know how does this shift the nature of the place if you end up having I don't think it'll be anything like, unlike anywhere else in the state. It'll be widely available in any other location within Massachusetts. So yeah, I don't see how. Hanging out, hanging out in, uh, in downtown Boston might be as much fun as hanging out in uh, the outdoor. Or the Berkshires. Yeah, in the Berkshires. Or Tanglewood. Same, or Tanglewood. Or Northampton. In those in North I don't think you really understand what we're what we're talking about here and the lifestyle that we're talking about is not some party culture where we're gonna go out. Truro and Wellfleet already have that. We already have the beachcomber. How many drunks are there out there? That's not what we're talking about. And I really appreciate that you as a, uh, a person from London don't truly understand what the Massachusetts law is all about. You're worried about Amsterdam. We're worried about keeping our farms and keeping open space. I think you really should be looking at it from that standpoint. There, all right? Yeah, there is also, I believe that's a 20% uh, the towns can only give uh, licenses for retail equal to 20% of your liquor license. So you're talking about if they're giving three, I mean, I can. Nope, we're at 20%. Yeah, and how many liquor licenses are there? Do you, do you know off the top of your head? I don't know that here. Eight. Eight. That's eight. eight. But they're not all year round. But right, zero correct. cultivation license so far. No, but we're talking about. But zero cultivation licenses so far. Correct. Exactly. So, so to make sure I'm still on. That one. Yeah. So, you know, that, that's a standard there, too. So, and I, I, think, I that think the only thing that I, I would change in, in addressing this um, 
One went through before I was on the board of selectmen, so I had no say in it. The second one that came through, I said no to. And then we were threatened with a lawsuit. Um, and I said no because we had one in the pipeline that was always that was already causing a great deal of controversy because of its location. And a lot of this is new to the residents, it's new to the other businesses. I wanted to get the one down first before we said yes to another. But we were threatened with a lawsuit, so we said yes to the second. But what I would have done way back before any of them were granted a host agreement was done a local preference. Right. I would have preferred to have kept this local with people we knew, people that were committed to the community and committed to sustainable community. That is not what will happen here because it takes big bucks and deep pockets to get this stuff done with security and so on and so forth. So. And that's why I feel like I haven't yeah. gotten one. I'm not sure you could have even passed that. Uh, yeah, we were like that through the Attorney General. Yeah, we, we, we tried that in Truro yeah. and with our bylaw. That was part of our compromise. We wanted to keep it with Truro residents and the Attorney General the, yeah, it's, it's, wasn't going oh, to right. allow us right. to do that because it's sort of exclusionary. It's exclusionary. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But I love that idea. Personally, well, we, I, we, I don't we, think we need all of these dispensaries. as part of the license. I could have conditioned it right. as part of the license. Yeah. Um, but in, in some ways, I don't need to use the term apples and oranges, but the dispensaries and the cultivation, I mean, I understand that they're aligned, but in reality, you've got these dispensaries. They're going to get their product from somewhere at this point. So wouldn't it be better? And certainly, none of us here are going to be able to grow enough for this incredible tourist you know, cannabis tourism, that you are correct, they are going to come, and P-Town will probably be a bachelor smoke weed destination. I mean, let's be honest, you know, but P-Town is already, you see all the brides with their little head things, and they can barely stand, and they're vomiting. I personally would rather see them stoned than vomiting on the street, but that yeah. is my own <laughs> I do think there is more of a discussion for our community to think about it, this and think it through, but I appreciate it's been it. wonderful to have all of you. And is there any other question? They're going to be hanging around and having some food so you can, you can attack them individually. one last comment. Remember, Emmy is the face of local well, cannabis well production yeah. and welfare. Well when you think of in the future, think of that family right there. That's who you've got to be thinking about. I also want to just say one other thing on my board members. I did not me mention Mary Fox. I, the two two other board members, but David and, and Mary Fox over there, and she's been fabulous. So thank you, as a board member. And with this, I want to thank all of you. you They're us. here to ask thank questions, you, and we'll have you back. And because this is going to be ongoing, Probably and it's time to eat. So please enjoy and keep on talking. So thank you. All. That was a trip. I felt that way.